In this video, we will discuss some basic concepts related to glomerular injury and a brief pathophysiology of nephrotic and nephritic syndrome. So let's start with the basic structure of glomerulus. You know that kidneys are made up of millions of nephrons and each nephron has its own cup-shaped structure that is called glomerulus. Now here you can see the diagram of a glomerulus. In this loop of vessels that form a tuft of capillaries are glomerular capillaries and surrounding them is the Bowman's capsule. Now if we make a cut section of the glomerulus and observe it under light microscope, you will see that each section of glomerulus is composed of multiple tufts of capillaries. And outer to each capillary loop there is a basement membrane and surrounding the basement membrane there are these cells that are known as podocytes. Moreover in between these glomerular capillaries there are some cells and cellular matrix that is known as mesangium. The word mesangium is made up of meso which means between and angium which means vessel. So mesangium is present between the vessels. So over on a light microscopy you see glomerular capillaries surrounded by basement membrane and photocytes, whereas in between these glomerular capillaries there is mesangial matrix. Now in order to understand the concepts of glomerular injury in more detail, we will observe each glomerular capillary loop under electron microscope. So basically on the innermost side there are glomerular capillaries formed by endothelial cells. Outside the endothelial cells there is a basement membrane. And outer to the basement membrane, there are epithelial cells that have foot-like projections facing towards the basement membrane. These cells are called podocytes. And actually, the basement membrane is between. And actually, this basement membrane is shared between these endothelial cells and podocytes. Now, based on this diagram, we can divide the glomerular injuries into two types. First is the injury to podocytes, and the second is the injury to endothelial cells. Now if we talk about injury to podocytes, the injury to podocytes lead to loss of foot processes of podocytes. This loss of foot processes causes flattening of foot processes which is known as effacement of foot processes. Now you need to understand that between the adjacent foot processes, there are diaphragms which are made up of a negatively charged protein known as nephrine. So nephrine is a negatively charged protein and the duty of this nephrine is to prevent the filtration of negatively charged plasma proteins into Bowman's capsule. But now due to the destruction of these foot processes, the attachment to this negatively charged protein nephrine is lost. So this will lead to increased filtration of plasma proteins. This will be called as protein urea and the resulting syndrome which occurs secondary to this protein urea is known as nephrotic syndrome. Alternatively, this leakage of proteins can also result from structural or physiochemical alterations in glomerular basement membrane. For example, in diabetes, the glomerular basement membrane can be altered by glycosylation and this can also cause leakage of proteins. Now due to the continuous leakage of plasma proteins into urine, there is a consistent decrease in the level of plasma proteins in blood and this is known as hypoproteinemia. Note that this is just not hypoalbuminemia, this is hypoproteinemia. And as you know that the function of plasma proteins is to maintain the osmotic pressure of the blood or colloid pressure of the blood, so due to the loss of albumin and other plasma proteins, fluid will start leaking from blood vessels into the intracellular compartment and this will manifest as edema. Now as the blood plasma is continuously being leaked from blood vessels into the tissue spaces, so this depletion of intravascular blood will cause activation of renin angiotensin aldosterone system. This aldosterone will cause fluid retention which will further aggravate this edema. Moreover, due to the continuous loss of plasma proteins into urine, there is loss of some proteins that act as inhibitors of LDL synthesis. And now as these proteins are continuously being lost, so the, so the production of LDL will be increased, which will cause hyperlipidemia. Now this constellation of all these features that are protein, urea, hypoproteinemia, edema and hyperlipidemia is known as nephrotic syndrome. So all these features are collectively called as nephrotic syndrome. Now alternatively, if there is injury to endothelial cells, that is commonly caused by inflammation, then the injured glomerular endothelial cells will result into the leakage of blood or bleeding which is known as hematuria. And along with hematuria, the injured glomerular capillaries will be unable to filter the blood and this reduction in GFR causes buildup of nitrogenous phase products in the blood which is known as azotemia, which is a sign of poor kidney function. Secondly, due to reduced GFR, you know that there will be activation of renin angiotensin aldosterone system. This angiotensin, and aldoster this angiotensin and aldosterone together raise the blood pressure causing hypertension. Now the constellation of these features that are known as hematuria, azotemia and hypertension is known as nephritic syndrome. So in conclusion, the nephrotic syndrome is caused by injury to podocytes or physiochemical changes in glomerular basement membrane that allow leakage of proteins and nephritic syndrome is caused by injury to endothelial cells. 
nephrotic syndrome presents with proteinuria, hypoproteinemia, edema, and hyperlipidemia. Whereas nephritic syndrome is characterized by hematuria, azotemia, and hypertension. So this was a basic review of nephrotic and nephritic syndrome. In the next sections, we will study the details of each disease that results in nephrotic or nephritic syndrome.